Welcome to Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast. This episode is brought to you by Sergio, our first Haken mayor on Patreon. So today on the show, I have a guest, and his name is Connor. If you could introduce yourself, Connor. What's up, everybody? I'm Connor. I've been friends with Chewy for like super duper long time. Like we were little kids and everything. It's awesome. And uh, I love Animal Crossing. So when he wanted me on the show, I was like, yeah, I'll come on there. And yeah, here I am. Yeah, so we've actually we pretty much chat daily about Animal Crossing, and lately we've also been playing a ton of New Leaf, um, which is pretty cool. And we, outside of that, we also sit there and just make predictions about when we'll see news about the new Animal Crossing game. So, yeah, I guess to get started, I want to kind of go into us playing Animal Crossing New Leaf because I remember you had. You bought a new 3DS, but then right. sold your new 3DS for a <laughs> Switch. But then I should, I should. Here, here's my 3DS stories. I got a 3DS the first week that they came out, like way back when they first happened, when they were 250. So I have the ambassador certificate and all that. I got Animal Crossing day one and played the hell out of it, or heck, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, but then I so let's see. I've, I've switched DS's a few times because I got like the XL version as and then I went back to uh, the new 3DS because they were on Black Friday sale. But then the Switch was coming out and I was like, oh yeah, you know, I'll just make the move to the Switch. I put in tons of hours in Animal Crossing. So, but I got the itch and I've been missing it for like the past since uh, March, essentially. From uh, March till just about September, I started playing again. And, uh, yeah, so I got another new 3DS off of Craigslist <laughs> and have been playing the hell out of it again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've I've had a couple 3DSs. I've had... I didn't get one at launch just because I don't... I think at the time I was more interested in, like, a PSP or something, which I, uh-huh. I never actually got a Sony handheld. Um, so my interest shifted pretty quickly to the 3DS. I think I played my brother Angels for a bit and I was like, oh, games on here are pretty cool. So I just got one of those and then eventually I sold that one to a friend and used that money to get a new 3DS XL. And so I had the smaller one before and then I switched to the bigger one. And at first, I was really torn because at the time when I got the new 3DS XL, there was the new 3DS, but it was only in Japan. And I was like, I really, yeah, I wanted those face plates so I could change mine to like the KK slider design. Um, But yeah, in the end, the the new 3DS small size came and I was, I had just gotten the new 3DS XL and I was like, man, should I just go and trade this in? But in the end, I was like, you know, I like the bigger screen. I like seeing Animal Crossing. Um, yeah, I agree. Like the uh, the big screen is definitely a plus. Like, I that's the one I had was the small one from Black Friday last year because they were on sale for a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the one I traded in towards the Switch. And then so when I got my new 3DS again, it's the new 3DS XL. And yeah, it's it's so much better having the bigger screen. Like even though the pixels are not as tight and you know, the resolution is kind of low for nowadays. It still looks better having the bigger screen, in my opinion, at least. Yeah, and turning the 3D on, you've got now the, like, what, what do they call that? Where it follows your face, so the 3D kind of stays oh, on Oh, yeah, point. the motion tracking. Yeah, because it, seeing Animal Crossing in 3D is like a whole nother level of just awesome. The depth of the world That's, is really uh, great. Animal Crossing and possibly minecraft because they they released that on 3ds um those are the reasons why i'm not the new 2ds xl because i really like that pokeball edition but not having the option for 3d animal crossing on the 3ds just kind of irked me a bit yeah so. yeah for sure the i think the 3d is a pretty cool feature a lot of people don't use it but I yeah. for the games that I really like it on, I just think it's worth it. Um, I'm one of those very few people that I think I've literally played every game that can be in 3D in 3D. Like uh, I even played through the entirety of Zelda 
in 3D. It doesn't bother my eyes at all. So, <laughs> and I think Animal Crossing, especially 98% in 3D. Yeah, I think on the on my first 3DS, I didn't like it too much because, like, if you were off even just a little bit, the effect would go away, and you'd feel oh, like yeah. you were looking at it cross-eyed. Yeah, and, and you'd get the uh, dual image thing going on. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I mean, basically, we've both been playing New Leaf again. Um, for a bit after the Welcome Amiibo update, I was playing every day. So like right after the game updated, I played every day until the end of the year, actually. Like I stopped playing on January 1st, 2017. Oh, okay. Like right when the year started, I kind of cut off again. But recently, I've been getting back into it. And it's funny because I've like stopped and started twice now, but both times I've been unable to complete like what I've been wanting to accomplish in the game, which is basically uh -huh. I'm buying bushes every day because I want um, I want my entire town to be I want the paths to be lined with bushes rather than using patterns. Yeah, um, yeah. I kind of got over the patterns. Um, some some people make some really nice ones and I like them, but. I think just for me in my town, I really like the natural Animal Crossing aesthetics. Yeah, I agree. Like, I've never really been a huge fan of patterns. I've tried it a few times in the past. I've tried doing cobblestone paths, water world, like doing um, just the like the kind of realistic looking ones that look like they blend in with the ground, but then you have to change for the seasons. Um, yeah, th but, that I think that's yeah, I what like got me so away. Yeah, that's what got me away from them. Just like. I didn't even realize people had to work on the same patterns every single change in Animal Crossing. Like, as the seasons change, the color of the grass would change, and then they'd have right. to pull out the new pattern to match it. And I was like, nope, I don't want to put yeah, these down it, all day. It takes so much time, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it, I think it looks better, though, honestly. Like, especially if you use the same paths, and then you end up getting the animal tracks in that spot. Yeah. And it'll look pretty good. Yeah, it looks good to see like the slightly worn down path and everything. But yeah, so basically with my town, I've, my focus has kind of shifted to the landscaping. Like when I started this project, I had I had QR code paths laid down. I had all of these um, public works projects, but I just kind of demolished everything. I cut mm -hmm. down every single tree. I took away, I took oh, out yeah. all my flowers and all my bushes. It was pretty much an empty town and I was working from scratch. So since then I was like, you know, I only want red flowers and sometimes I put like an orange one to give a little break in the color and sometimes even a blue flower will pop up. What about the coveted black flowers? Um, I, I have some of them because some of them add pretty nicely to that palette. Like, I'm going uh -huh. for kind of, like, red and orange warmer tones in my town. Like, I cut down all the trees, and I've only planted cherries and apples since. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, that's, like, all I've been growing. And then for the bushes, I'm buying them all just to have them um, as, like, kind of placeholders while I eventually only have... Uh, I want to have only hollies and sweet olive starts. Oh, yeah, I remember you were telling me that. <laughs> that seems like it's going to take a very long time with how much leaf sells the certain bushes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm at most getting, like, I don't know, five a week, and I don't, like, time travel or anything. And by five a week, I mean, like, maybe a combination of hollies and sweet olive starts. But, yeah, it's going to be a very slow build. And, I don't know, I guess I could check... Um, bell tree forums and like make trades with people for those specific things but right but even then it's still going to be a task because each one of those people only gets five or so a time yeah unless you end up meeting a hacker and they end up just making like a hundred of them for you yeah that's true but i think like bell tree forums are specifically um against getting like hacked items and things so uh -huh. i doubt i'll find anybody there but regardless i'm just happy kind of like logging in every day and I, I essentially my only daily task is i grab the bushes and then whatever happens happens i'll look at like the meow coupon achievements oh, yeah. and see if i could do any pretty quickly yeah i like that they added that because it gives you something to do mm -hmm. like 
because there is a, there is a point in Animal Crossing a lot of times where it's uh, when it's not the holidays or when it, once you've done all the fossils and whatnot for that day, it starts getting a little empty. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice that I did that. Yeah. So it's, um, like I don't want to go like super into what we want in the next game just yet. But it's something that was in Animal Crossing before in the first one that they haven't brought back yet. They bring it back someday and it's asking for chores. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that was a way to keep playing. Yeah, because <laughs> was... I would just <laughs> sit there and be like talking to all of my people and being like, yo, give me something to do. I, I want yeah. whatever free thing you're going to give me. Yeah, like you could ask them for it now. I mean, they you know they come to you sometimes, mm -hmm. but it would it'd be nice to be able to like ask people again, like, hey, do you need me to do anything for you? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, nowadays, like when somebody dings you, you're usually like, oh, I really hope they give me a new public works project. <laughs> yeah, the huge. I, that's a huge problem with mine right now. Like, I I have a lot of hours, you know, in the game, but. I don't have very many good public works projects mm -hmm. and it's like, like people just don't ping me for it like i've tried doing some of the tricks where you have whole pockets and whatnot and then people are just like hey i'm gonna move and i'm like no you're not <laughs> yeah and it's never the ones i want to move it's funny yeah so funny thing i actually have all of the public's work projects but i got the last one um literally like i don't know a week after I'd started playing again, which was maybe a month or two ago. So I don't know. Yeah, it's and, been years. And you play way more than I do, actually. Yeah. I, I don't have the 500 hour tree thing in yet. Cause that, that's like the highest trees. You have to have 500 days, 500 hours. And I'm probably sitting somewhere around three or 400. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but I have like nowhere near the like, whole collection of public works projects it's really sad <laughs> yeah i mean it takes forever and even like i remember being kind of annoyed because i was like dude i'm sitting at like 800 hours and phineas hasn't come and given me this badge <laughs> oh yeah yeah i don't know if it was waiting for me to hit like 500 days or something but yeah there was just some kind of slowdown where it wouldn't give me that badge to prove it yeah th 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 that's a big bummer on that one yeah so that's what i'm waiting for is that 500 badge i'm like okay hopefully when it comes up i'll start getting more pwps <laughs> yeah because the public works are super fun i mean i've torn like i said i tore all of mine down and i've essentially been waiting until like all my paths and my villagers are set and then i was gonna like look at that empty space in my town and build essentially See, i think all it's over. um it's funny because you and I, I think, have totally different outlooks on how to make our towns. Like yours, you're doing the uh, kind of this uh, organized bit. But then on mine, it's very just natural, foresty. Like I have uh, I have spots. Like I've organized it so that people live on the right side on the coast. And then <laughs> I've uh, got my what I call the culture center, where it has some of the uh, like the stone tablet, the uh, large structure um just kind of stuff that looks old school and like ancient artifacts and then the island ish area in line because i have it to where the river bends and cuts off half the town i think you've seen yeah um so my house is there the town square is there the roost is there and then i made a park <laughs> so it's kind of all like separated in zones but overall, the uh, the aesthetic is mostly natural, where I kind of just keep forest growing. There's like an orange grove over here and bamboo along the water. So Yeah, and I like that a lot because, I mean, I'm going to build public works around the paths and stuff, but there are like areas where I'm like, you know, I just want like some trees to pop up here. And that's the feature. Maybe chop down some so people can like sit in, on the stump in the forest. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah. That, I was actually thinking about that is um, kind of thinning out the trees in the uh, neighborhood area that I made and and having the cultural center be 
all thick trees and like a forest so it's like <laughs> a natural area that's also where the campgrounds are yeah i like that you're calling it like the cultural center because like when i started building my public works projects i kind of focused in on making them in the northern part of my town like next to um the entrance to the little city and the shops and oh, things yeah, yeah. Um, so my police station is up there, my coffee shop is up there, and I made an extra character who's up there who I intend to be like kind of the Gravity Falls area. So I'm trying oh, to make like yeah. the mystery shack. So it's a little, um, a souvenir shop for people to visit. Yeah, that's something I did in my town too is, uh, because like where I put the cultural center, I put it next to where the RV park is as well. So it's kind of like that whole area is like camping. But mm -hmm. then over where all the people live, I was actually planning on making, because um, I have a separate character there, and I was planning on making that house kind of into like a shopping center, like yeah. a little mall or something. Yeah, I love that. Because I feel like in my house, like my own little character's house, I don't use a lot of those items where, because you have so many good ones to like display things and make a little cafe kind of thing. Yeah, my mom actually her basement is a candy shop and it looks really really good <laughs> i it's love like that. i was like when I, the first time i saw it i was like whoa i've never thought of even making <laughs> anything like this because i don't make my house into stores i make my house as a house yeah i want to live in it hers. it was so cool yeah i totally get that because yeah i'm just making a house that i feel like my person would live in you know yeah whereas so uh, yeah, it's just cool to make those extra characters and build things that you normally wouldn't build. Um, but the basement's always a good one to work with. Like, I know you went to my town recently and you saw my basement's set up as like a venue. So bands, yeah, like a, a band is playing. Area. Yeah, so I have all the instruments and stuff because I love music and I just wanted uh, you, a room. You've seen mine, it's a fortress of solitude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that one's really cool. And you have the Superman outfit to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. And so also oh, that was a fun room. Yeah. But yeah, I I've wanted to build other houses. I think my biggest regret like building my house in my game is finding out like the southern half of your town doesn't grow the cedar trees. Yeah, that's a weird bummer. Yeah. And so I'm constantly like I wish I could move and live in a place with cedar trees. <laughs> that's the one thing yeah. I want to do. So I It kinda... doesn't make a whole lot of sense either cuz like you look at places like Santa Cruz and you have pine trees right on the beach basically. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I I was that was the only thing I was disappointed. Like I've had my town since release day and um, what was that? June like thirteenth, two thousand thirteen or something. 13th, June ninth, somewhere yeah, around. Yeah, June ninth. Um, yeah, so my town is like, it's getting to be five years old, and I've lived without the cedar trees around it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that was kind of what I was thinking the other day too, because my house is like right on the coastline on the southern end, and I was able to get my bushes and my yard going, but. I can't have any cedar trees. At least I have an apple tree, though. That's that's one thing I really wanted in my yard. Yeah, the apples are nice. I like. Also, I reset my game a lot to get cherries. And oh yeah. But I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like the apples now. I thought the apples were pretty basic before, but I think the uh -huh. perfect apple has like a nice look in your town. The the glimmeringness. Yeah, the glittering. Um, and maybe it's because, like, the perfect cherries get kind of yellowy, and I really like going more for the red theme in my town. Yeah, but the, isn't that a, the real-life ones? They're called Bing cherries that have the yellow look to them, I think. Yeah, I something think it's like Bing that. Cherry. Either way, the, whatever cherry it is that has that yellow, those are so, so good. They are really good. <laughs> so, That's mostly why I yeah, went so with cherries. I saw that, yeah, I was totally cool with it because I was like, man, those cherries are delicious, so. Yeah. But yeah, I think just, like, in general... Everything like about my gameplay recently has been about like the outwardly aesthetics to my town. For example, I have all the um, I have all the Animal Crossing amiibo except for the ones mm -hmm. that they didn't release in the states. And oh, yeah, all the cards. I have all the I have the physical statues, but I don't have any. Like I have barely any cards. Yeah, so I have all the little statues. You have one. Uh, that one is a bell one, 
waiting yeah, for me. Yeah, your Isabel <laughs> waiting on my shelf. It's yeah, just uh, chilling there next to Bob Ross. Yeah, that's the summer outfit, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, and then I have the 400 cards from that main series and the 50 Welcome Amiibo ones. So, yeah, so recently I actually ordered um, a guide from Japan that was... It, it, it essentially just goes over all the Welcome Amiibo update features, and I kind of have to go off the pictures because I don't know Japanese. I'm trying to learn, but um, one of the cool things about it was I could look through all of the Welcome Amiibo villagers and see what their houses would look like because oh. I'm picking villagers based on their houses now, not so much like... Because everybody's Who got, they like, there are clearly popular villagers in the game that everybody's kind of looking for and wants in their town. But me, I'm specifically looking for villagers with the house that I want in my town. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was actually something I took into consideration when I was getting a couple of cards from you, was specifically their houses. Like, I was like, oh, wait, if I uh, depend, I was like, okay, these ones I all like these characters and i was like but what do their houses look like <laughs> yeah like recently like i got rid of marshall who was in my town for a while and i don't remember how i got them i think i bought them back when the animal crossing slave trade thing was a thing oh yeah <laughs> um but i probably spent like 15 million bells on him but uh -huh. it it just got to the point where i was like your modern exterior is really not jiving You're really killing the vibes man yeah and I mean, I know people, one of my friends, he really wanted like a modern city type of town. And yeah. so like that house would work perfect in their place. But for mine, I was just like, no, I need like little cottages with little woodland creatures. <laughs> you know, what's weird about the uh, modern town thing is the public works projects for the modern like aspect actually kill your uh, beautiful town uh, aspect. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know why they did that, because, like, some people, you know, want a metropolitan town. Yeah. But any, like, a lot of the bright lights or the, uh, like, the video screen, they mm -hmm. actually bring your beauty down. Oh, that's pretty crazy. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Because, I mean, part of me, like, really likes that. Like, I've always kind of liked a combination of nature and, like, buildings and stuff. Yeah. So it's, like, really cool to see like a city that has buildings with gardens at the top, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, in some aspects, I like it. But for my town, I'm just like going for this specific look <laughs> where it doesn't fit. Um, yeah. For me, it's like I like the, uh, the modern aesthetic. But then it's like the ability to not be able to make um, stone pathways and whatnot kind of kills it a little bit for me when it comes to making the modern look. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, which, I, uh, I had a question, I guess, uh, about your um, public works projects, because you were asking if I had extra amiibo, but... I'm guessing you're looking for like specific um, personalities so you can get specific um, public works projects. Right. So, so like, um, what, which which ones are you looking for? What what do you want to build in your town? Well, like one thing specifically is my town's name is Okinawa. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been um, I've been trying to keep it like a traditional Japanese town, and grumpy characters are the ones who suggest all of the. Uh, all of the Japanese stuff. Yeah, they and do the Zen. For, uh, the my, Zen. My one grumpy guy, Croquet, he left about two months ago, and I was like, "Dang it, I can't even get those public works projects right now." So I was trying to get at least one grumpy guy, and uh, that—that's actually what came from um, why I wanted Kabuki, because Kabuki also matches that Japanese theme, and uh, he would be my grumpy guy. But I kind of like um, what's his name—the other, the guy with the mustache. I, um, Was it Cousteau? Oh, uh, Gaston. Y yeah, I like him just because as a grumpy character, he really works because he has that mustache and he just looks totally angry. <laughs> and uh, I like imagining him as just the cranky old man who lives in town. Is like, all you people are so noisy. Get out of my yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really love the grumpy characters. Um, when I first started my town, I had this grumpy squirrel named Rick. 
And I think oh, Rick's good. I think when you're getting club LOL or something, you have to get some petition signed by your neighbors to allow the club to be added to your town. Um, but I went to Rick and he gave me like the most like it, he was like an old dude saying, oh, these crazy kids, they just need some way to let their energy loose or something. So he signed it. But just whatever he said, I was so pleased by his answer. Like it seemed like the grumpiest old man, <laughs> yeah. just completely supportive of people's youth. Yeah. See, that's the thing. It's like, I like having one grumpy character. I, I like my town could definitely use more because of the aesthetic I'm going for. But for some reason, just having only one grumpy character makes it that much more fun because they're just the one angry guy in town. Yeah. <laughs> and that uh, I've talked about this story before, but like my first experience with a grumpy character was in the GameCube version. Oh, and they're way mean. They are so, so mean to you. Mean. And Vladimir, he's this pink little bear and he was just the biggest jerk. But I was devastated when he moved away. I was like, oh, man. I kind of really liked you, even though you were so mean to me. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of wish they would bring that back though, because they were like, they were like, probably make a little kid cry meme. Yeah, like I mean, they toned down Rossetti for that reason. Oh yeah, Rossetti basically used to swear. Like they even would have like little weird um, characters all over his speech, like he was <laughs> to imply he was swearing. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, I think just overall they've like toned down the game to kind of hit that. This is just a relaxing game, you know. It's not. It's mm. a stress-free kind kind of thing. Oh yeah, Rossetti used to make you say that you're an idiot. That, yeah, that's another thing I remember. <laughs> I think like so. he, he would make you say terrible things about yourself. <laughs> yeah, like th those were the only like response options, right? Yeah, well, you actually had to type it in. Like, it was, he would be like, say, I'm an idiot. And then you have to, like, then you would go on the keyboard and type in, I am an idiot. <laughs> and then you'd be like, good, now you know your place. And then he'd leave. Oh, uh, I think, he, you know, I remember reading about that. And you could actually, like, type in other things. And Rossetti would have some weird reactions to them. Yeah, I, 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 like, when, he, when you type in, I'm an idiot, you could type in, you're an idiot. And he's like, oh, you think you're smart now, do you? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, but yeah, also, I uh, thinking about Rossetti and like the Amiibo, I, I kind of like stumbled upon some people talking about like opening some sort of like Amiibo shop where I think they have people come into their town to see specific characters, RVs kind of thing, so they could order furniture. Or, mm -hmm. um,. But I don't know. I feel like just people have to time travel or reset a lot to make that happen. Um, but yeah, that was just a little side thing that I stumbled upon. I was like, oh, I guess people can get like some extra bells. Um, but it made me think of like there are always posts on like how to earn money on New Leaf. And I remember yeah. you and I were talking about it because it's kind of astonishing that people don't know the best way to make money in the game. Right, which I just actually did last night. I don't know if I messaged you about it. Uh, I saw the picture you posted about it. Yeah, on on uh, the Animal Crossing New Leaf fanatics on Facebook. Um, the the stock market, the turnip trade, whatever one you want to call it. <laughs> it's it's literally the best way to make money in the game, and so many people don't utilize it, know about it, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, um, I remember because I did that a lot, and I. I don't. I didn't ever go crazy. I feel kind of bad that like, I never reached that like 999 million bell mark because you get oh, um, oh, yeah. you get badges for that slash like some special item. I think you get the ABD machine you in your actually, house. I think you get the ABD for a hundred million in New Leaf. Oh, so it's a lot less. Um, yeah, in in City Folk it was it was crazy. Like City Folk, they were like, hey, if you want the ABD machine, it had to be 999. Um, yeah, yeah, you know what? It is a hundred million. Yeah, it's definitely a yeah. hundred million because nine 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 is insane. <laughs> yeah, that's. I, I actually was making the effort for that now because uh, the most I've gotten is, well, I actually met twenty six million right now after last night's adventure. Mm -hmm. But um, I 
I, I am gonna make the effort to get the hundred million and have the ABD machine in my house because it's it's so easy to do it with the turnip trade. Uh, so like what happened is last week I'll just give this what happened is I filled my locker and my inventory with turnips that were ninety two bells each, and, and last night on the forum the guy had five hundred and fifty bells buying each for the turnips. Mm -hmm. So. I invested about 1.8 million and walked away with uh, almost 10 million. Yeah, and so I guess for people who don't know, the stock market, you buy turnips on Sundays, Sunday morning before noon. Um, yeah. And then Monday through Saturday, you'll have different turnip prices. So there's a morning price and then an evening price on the stock market. And there are actually like a bunch of guides so you can... Um, I guess predict if your stock prices are gonna go like crazy and rise. Yeah, the turnip wizard. Yeah, or if they're just gonna crash. Um, but regardless, uh, there are tons of people online who are always checking their stock market and essentially just letting people know that hey, my prices are five hundred bells per turnip, and yeah, if you sell at that point, like you're just gonna strike it rich in the game. Yeah. I mean, like, that's that's what happened with me. I turned under 2 million into 10 million. Yeah, like, it, it's so, pretty easy. Because, uh, I mean, I, the first game, I would essentially just spend my time fishing at the ocean, and I'd deal with a bunch of sea basses and stuff, but I'd only be looking for, like, red snappers and... What was the stripe the one? The barred game, knife job? It was a little easier to make money fishing because the sea bass weren't huge. Yeah. Yeah, and you could just ignore the small shadows and you're like, oh, I'm all good. But then in Wild World, they made sea bass huge and it makes it hard to tell which is a good fish and which is a sea bass. Yeah, and then um, I think City Folk was kind of similar to Wild World overall. But like New Leaf, yeah. the sea bass are huge, but they're, they added like a bigger shadow on top of that for like really good fish. Mm -hmm. Which is, it, it makes it a little easier, but... I remember just being really confused at first because I was like, why did I catch a sea bass with this giant shadow? <laughs> yeah, it was, a, I mean, like, it makes sense because in real life, sea bass are gigantic. Yeah, they really are. But, so it was always weird in the first game when it was like, this is a sea bass? <laughs> yeah, and then but, Wild um, World, making money, I think I would essentially make my money every three days because I just farmed orchards of fruit that weren't native to my town. Uh, yeah, that's, but at that, that, that point, but at that point, that was also annoying because they didn't, you couldn't make the little fruit baskets. Like you had to have an individual fruit in each of your things, so you were yeah. only selling fifteen at a time. The uh, the original Animal Crossing, the way I made money in it was the island. And what you do is you take a fruit that um, it's usually not your native fruit, whoever is on the island. But they all had a, a favorite fruit, and you play with the Game Boy uh, adapter. And it was a little mini game where you buried the fruit in the ground, you throw some on the ground, and you give a shovel to them. And they would go and dig it up, and then if they liked the fruit, they would throw bells in there. Oh. So if, like, if it was their favorite fruit, they would throw like bags of 30,000 bells. Yeah, I feel like I never figured out how to make that work. Because essentially, like I'd plug in my Game Boy Advance to the GameCube, and then that would let you go to the island, you know? And yeah. then I'd see, like, on the Game Boy screen, there was something I could do, but I just couldn't figure out what it was. And so this yeah. is blowing my mind. I didn't know I could get tons of bells for throwing fruit in there. Yeah, so it was really cool. It was like, it, it made me wish that they made an Animal Crossing for GBA because what happens is you plug it all in, and you leave after after you bury all the fruit and you leave a shovel there and then you leave but it'll stay on the gba and you'll start controlling uh like a little hand and mm -hmm. you'll ping the uh the villager who's living on the island and you can click the shovel and then they, they pick up the shovel and then they go around and they start digging up all the fruit that you buried <laughs> and if they like the fruit they'll put like thirty thousand. if they don't like it they'll just make a little face and like throw and just the dirt back in with nothing <laughs> um, and then sometimes they'll throw like a thousand bells or a hundred bells in there you know but yeah if it was their favorite fruit they would put 30,000 in there and you could just make super money like that that's awesome yeah I had no idea 
So essentially, I was, you would just find me fishing for red snappers and barred knife jaws. <laughs> yeah, those were the money. Those were the real money makers in the first one. If you didn't use the island. Yeah. So I think let's talk about future games. The uh, Animal Crossing on the Switch. So more specifically, like things that we want the new game to do or like features to have. Like for example. Um, I've played a lot of Happy Home Designer, and I really like a lot of the design features in that game. Um, the most notable to me are um, rugs. You could put a rug down, you could put ceiling fans, things on the ceiling. Um, but even better, um, as I said, I'm getting really into like the exterior decoration in Animal Crossing. But in that game, you could literally put any item on their front yard. Um, yeah, and um, th that's actually my first three that I put on my list are basically that. Like, I put open floor plan for decorating in the house, ability to downsize rooms, and then yard area around the house. Which, uh, what I mean by open floor plan is in Happy Home Designer, you can snap to half spaces. Yeah. But I would like it to where you, if you could just organize it however you want it, like tuck chairs in and then move them diagonally and just sort of rotate in place all kinds of stuff like that you yeah sort of organize your house however yeah tucking the chairs in would be huge for me <laughs> because there's so many rooms where i'm like here's a table with four chairs around it i really That's wish the these chairs room. weren't <laughs> taking up all the entire room yeah exactly so yeah just being able to like interact with the furniture a little more and move it out of your way if needed pretty easily mm -hmm. that would be really cool um, yeah, I think open floor plan would be so cool. It, like, it doesn't even seem like it'd be a difficult task to do. Yeah. Because other games have done it with similar building things. Mm -hmm. And I think just being able to, like, move furniture how you want it. Like, especially if you were dealing with the, uh, the sloppy set. And uh, you just put everything everywhere. And you could make it all disorganized and not uniform. Yeah. I'm kind of like bouncing off that because the sloppy set makes me think of this specifically, but it'd be really cool if like the furniture you had could also be like toppled over. So if oh, you had yeah. like a sloppy chair, what if it was just like pushed so it was laying oh, on the ground? On the ground. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Yeah. I, I just, uh, I, I want to interact with like the furniture a little more when I'm in the game uh -huh. and it would be cool to see that take place. Um, but yeah, I think yeah. like the bulk of well, my, or er, go for it. Well, because you mentioned you want to interact with your furniture more. I actually put that like this relates to it is I put house activities, mm -hmm. and in the first game they had those Nintendo systems that you could play with. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it was cool, and I think uh, I think they could do something if they added like mini games or something like. You know they have the uh, the welcome amiibo or uh, not welcome amiibo but the the Wii game the Nintendo the Wii U game mm -hmm. um, amiibo festival. Yeah. So like that's a very simple game, but they could have something like you know board games or something in your house that it like when you have uh, players over or even if you had uh, the villagers the guests like play mini games with them it would it would make so much more for your house to do and i think like having something like that would be pretty cool yeah i'd like that a lot because i liked going to the island a lot um mm -hmm. to play those mini games and then you got the shelves and stuff so there was like special furniture that you could get but it'd be really cool to just like make it easy for you to like oh i have this board game in my game because it kind of brings back that original quirkiness of the first game where you could play the nes games in your house um yeah and, uh, like and i just feel like it would make your house that much more your own like being able to do stuff in your house aside from just decorate yeah and then also the other thing we talk about a lot is essentially um the the room sizes yeah um because I really like seeing um, those medium or small sized rooms and the way people decorate them. And like a small room could be like just a bathroom, which is pretty cool. I like that. 
Um, yeah, but one of the you can really like toy around with it and make something because you don't always need a big room. Like you said, the bathroom that's a perfect one, or mm -hmm. just having a um, making like a utilities closet sometimes looks cool. Yeah, and uh, that also like lets you use a lot of the items that you're not using, just because like I don't have a reason to put this in my home, but if I had yeah. this kind of room, I would. Um, but yeah, I, I really want to see the next game kind of give you more options when you're upgrading your house. Um, mm -hmm. And even like oh, getting away from upgrading, like it'd be cool if you could downsize. Downgrade, yeah. yeah, downgrade your house and be like, oh, well, I thought I wanted this room big, but I actually want it small. And oh, you know, instead of the doing the usual square shape or the square layout, I want it to be like a rectangle, you know? Yeah, that'd be cool, too. I didn't actually think about that, like, making round rooms, rectangles, like... Yeah, uh, this different. room's a triangle, but, like, doing different shaped rooms to be, like, this is a new way that you can interact with your layout, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's one of the things I, w I really want to see, because you could, um, in Happy Home Designer, kind of choose different layouts for your people, and I was like... Oh, it'd be really cool to have this like really long hallway when you enter your house <laughs> that takes yeah, you to like, like the uh, living room or something. Have it go from one room to another room, like make a hallway, but then have little rooms in that hallway, something like that. Yeah, and then it'd be really, I think that, that stuff like that would also help for, um, I guess towns that kind of go off a theme like there's some scary towns and they're like oh man I really want to put this creepy mm -hmm. hallway <laughs> yeah and I would also just leave it open more to like personal taste and design so that way when you go into someone's house it's not like okay here's their left right top room it's mm -hmm. like whoa what is their house actually gonna be yeah like when you walk in you're like oh this is like a completely different layout than my house how do I make my way through it? It makes it really interesting. Um, yeah, it'd be super fun. Yeah. Another thing I really wanted to add, um, thinking about like the long hallways, it'd be cool if you could like attribute sounds to certain things. So like, say you put like a wooden floor down in your place and you're like, oh, I want it to creak whenever you step over this space. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be cool. I, like I feel like that's a one detail that they probably wouldn't do, but like, <laughs> it would be cool if they did. Yeah, because I like, like I said, I like the interaction with things in your house. And um, recently, my wife and I we moved to um, Salt Lake City, and a lot of the homes have wooden floors. And so we walk around, and I'm just like, everything creaks here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it would just make and it it's, feel. It's there's always one spot that creaks more than others. Yeah, it just feels like more lived in your home. Yeah. With those little details. Yeah, that would be that'd be super fun. I think um is there any other details on the house that you were thinking of? Um, other than adding what was in Happy Home Designer open floor plan idea. The other outside. Oh. Yeah, so actually I would really want like one of the upgrades to be like building a yard. Either like you could do a front yard, a backyard, and then yeah, in I, that little something I definitely want. Yeah, in that little space, like you could use any item. You know what I mean? Um uh -huh. maybe it's not like a public works kind of thing, but yeah, it'd just be cool to have like a designated area that's like for your home where you can do anything. Um but yeah, it's just yeah, like, like outside of your house instead of, you know, inside. Yeah, like if you wanted to have a janky, run-down, broken car in front of your house with just tools and stuff, it'd be kind of funny. You <laughs> could do it. Or you could have a beautiful garden with like fountains. Yeah, I, spe I was specifically thinking of like, uh, it's funny you said like junk items kind of thing, but like, you know, some houses have that like, side yard where they just kind of stick the lawnmower <laughs> yeah yeah so i was the trash thinking trash cans there yeah the trash cans the recycling can all those little items um yeah uh, I, but yeah that, i guess that's all for my me in terms of like design of the house yeah because if we're moving on to public works projects one thing i think really needs to be added to the game is grid highlighting Oh, like, for sure. So you can choose where, because it's like 
asking Isabel, hey, can I put this here? And then she's like, no, it's too close to that. And then you're like, and you move up a single pixel, it feels like. And she's like, oh, yeah, it'll go perfect here. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. It's like you have no idea where you're going to put the thing. And then also, like, when you put it, it gives you that, like, one angle to view it from. I've really wanted right. there to be, like, a way to shift the camera when you're in that screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it gives you an angle that you don't actually ever see it from unless you press up on the D-pad and look up at the sky and whatnot. Yeah. So it's like, you're like, oh, I think that looks good. And then, like, as soon as you see it sitting there, you're like, oh, dang, I wanted it one more space down, actually. Yeah. For sure. I, and I'm consistent. In the beginning of the game, there were so many public works projects that I built and then demolished the next day because I was like, oh, this placement is horrid. <laughs> yeah, and, I've done that a few times. Yeah, so I think just being able to like get a better grasp of what it would be or what it would mm -hmm. look like in that place, um, the game really needs that for sure. Yeah, just like even if it was just something like little squares on the ground where it's like this is green and then some squares are red it's like can't go here that would be perfect like it doesn't need to be super complicated but it just like you can move it around on the screen and be like there it is that's where we want the project which doesn't sound like it's a big deal like but yeah that would totally help with any sort of city planning which mm -hmm. uh which i actually have that as well i think since you're the mayor you should be able to designate where people live <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, with the last update, they finally were like, okay, when people move in, they won't show up on your QR codes, you know? So, yeah. But then people spend a lot of time like setting up their QR codes so people can only move into certain spots. And right. And it, I think it's, it, I feel like it, it part ugly. of it. Yeah, it, it looks terrible. My, you saw my town. I have because i got rid of like all of my little path grid things yeah. all i have right now is like custom clothing that i like to wear um, yeah for me right now my town is all mapped out to add new villagers because i want to replace some of them and i just have the town flag just littered all across <laughs> the town and it just does not look good at all disrespecting the like, flag <laughs> yeah it's like i kind of have to do this or else people will just move into the cultural center next to all these ancient artifacts yeah they'll move in all willy-nilly and with no respect to what you have built in that area <laughs> yeah or they move right in front of a bridge yeah you know? like yeah. i had that someone was covering like the whole bridge they were, i was like oh i have to walk around your house to get to the top part of town okay Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in terms of like public works projects, um, when you're thinking, because I've tried to think of specifically like the least um, kind of invasive way of doing it or the least awkward way where it's like you can control where people move in, but it doesn't feel like too yeah. controlling. And so what I, I thought I was... I don't want to be like, snap, like, you can only live in this spot here, here, and here. It's just like a zone would be nice. Yeah, so my thought of it, because in the games prior to New Leaf, there were those signs all over the town. Yeah. And those signs were where people could move in. And, you know, they would give you, like, little game tips. But it would be cool if, like, for your public, wor public works projects, they were like oh, I want to build a residential area. So it gives you, like, that sign, and you can put it up where somebody could move in, And that would be perfect. And it makes sense, like, with the game, because that was already in the game before. So mm -hmm. that, that would be even better, what you just put there. Like, instead of just saying general neighborhood, you can put plots just like that, and there you go. That, y that's way better, actually. <laughs> yeah, and that, that was kind of my thought. I was just like, what what's something that's already existed for this thing yeah. but you know like... that even makes it better too because that puts a progression to your town because rather than you know starting a week later and like within the first month it's like oh i've got 10 people now it could be like no you have to build a bigger town to allow more people to move in yeah so it would be kind of neat yeah it gives you like a better sense of the progression where it's like you have to earn new villagers versus them just coming in mm-hmm yeah, and that'd be, that, I think that that's a really cool idea, just having it to where it's a public work project where here's a house spot. Go mm -hmm. ahead and build. Yeah. And it saves you the hardship of someone building in front of a bridge or... Or in your, your orchard. Your last, 
Yeah, like you have a tree, like your last perfect tree, and you're like, oh, now I have to find another perfect cherry. Yeah. Or, yeah, or just an orchard. Like you made a nice, clean orchard, and they just destroyed it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good way to, like, control it without it being, like, really mean, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because I always, you know, you build relationships with the animals that move in. And sometimes, like, somebody moves in and you're just like, I hate where you moved in. I'm going to be really mean to you to get you out. start hitting you in the head with the net. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, I like that aspect. Um, but you also made me think of um, when you were explaining putting down the public's work, public works projects. Um, one of the big things with, like, Animal Crossing coming to the Switch is I think this is the first system it's going to be on that has like those two sticks outside of the GameCube that had the C stick, you know? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's like the first time it's coming back to a system that gives you like a wider range of motion. So I'd really like to see um, them implement the camera into the I have outside too. world. Yeah, I have camera options. I think over the shoulder is one I really like, and specifically I want that because of Mario Kart. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just just the fact, like, you know, yeah, you're in the cart in that game, but just the thought of wandering around through the town, it'd be really akin to uh, Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life, mm -hmm. kind of like that. And I think just being able to, that you can snap the camera and have the traditional method where it's like, okay, this looks like old school Animal Crossing, but then just have the option to change it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. Just like getting a different viewpoint. Um, even like looking at things in first person can give you a cool new way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I think kind of kind of goes in here. Like you said, first person. Um, that would be cool, especially if they implemented height adjustments. Um, and mixed in with height adjustments is skin tone. Because even though I'm a white guy, I think it's kind of silly that everyone has to be a white person dude you don't know how much time i spent on the island just like just walking around tan. trying to stay tan in the game <laughs> i'm just like i want to be brown this, this is what i am <laughs> yeah and it's and it's just kind of funky because um like it, this was funny one time my mom she was like wait why'd my skin get all dark you know because um for her it was weird because she sunburns and so I think it would actually make sense if you had characters with different skin tones that, like, the whiter shades would burn versus darker shades, you know? Yeah. Or, like, you have to put on sunscreen. I think it would be a pretty neat thing. Um, it's like, oh, he'll burn if you don't put the sunscreen on, <laughs> which it's like, it sounds complicated, but I mean, or trivial, I should say, not complicated. But mm -hmm. a lot of people, I think, would totally enjoy that having the option to make their character look more like them yeah for sure I, I i see that one mentioned a lot on like the animal crossing reddit like people just really want to be able to pick their skin tone and you know just live their life as that skin tone versus spending a lot of time tanning at the island mm -hmm. and i think height is another good one because um especially when you consider the old animal crossing where everyone was like squat and little Mm -hmm. um, and it now everyone's pretty big, you know, everyone's almost the height of the bears. And yeah. And I think it would be cool to be able to choose the height because some people, like my girlfriend, she's small and she would <laughs> probably like her character to be small. Yeah. And it's like, it would, it would add just that much more characteristics, like the smaller people going up to like the mice and whatnot. It's like, look, these characters are the same height as me. And then you have these big towering bears next to you. Whereas if you're a tall person, it's like, hey, look at these tiny mice. Yeah, I really like that because uh, one of my favorite things starting up New Leaf was that they really worked on giving all the different animals different heights. So like you had like short frogs and squirrels and stuff and other animals were more like a medium size, but they could even get to that large size. So yeah, I think it'd be, I didn't even think about that, like just picking your different height. Yeah, I mean, leave the face as the like the questionnaire thing maybe i mean even then i always thought it was a little silly like that you couldn't really choose your face that it was kind of what really resulted is looking online for a guide of which face you wanted and then re 
repeating until you get that face and whatnot. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think most people have done that. Most people have been like, I'm choosing this face. This is what I will answer, rather than just going with whatever to get the answers to. Yeah, I did that for sure. Because, I mean, it helped. Um, like, we got the game late. Part of me doesn't like that, but part of me was like, oh, good, all the face guides are done. I can just go in and be, like, what I want to look like. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think you should just be able to build your character. I think skin tone, face, height, uh, starting hair, haircut. Maybe the questions can do something else. I feel like the questions are neat, but they don't really have any other effect in the game aside from your face. So, yeah, maybe they could have some sort of effect. Who knows? Yeah, I yeah, I wonder if they could do like some sort of like personality traits to your character that made certain things happen, or I don't know. But, different speaking options or something maybe like that yeah because but yeah i think like we should definitely move on from like figuring out how we look like from the questions because i think in the first game it worked because it was like a surprise you know you didn't know yeah. you what your what you were answering was going to affect what you looked like but now that right. we all know secrets out it would yeah, be nice to just like, have hey, more control what? you're doing this again yeah uh, it'd be funny or it'd be kind of cool if like maybe um like we're always we're usually greeted by rover or something but say like the right. new greeter is like a bat or something and they don't see very well and they're like oh, oh yeah. can you tell me what you look like kind of thing yeah that would be a good idea yeah i guess i think of things in terms of like what is the least or what is the way to put this into the game without like that way without like taking you out of it you know just have tortimer in there and he doesn't have his glasses on and then he's like i can't see what you look like and then he's like and then he gets his glasses oh that's what you look like <laughs> exactly and uh, you know that would actually be hilarious if like you were the mayor again and tortimer's there to like teach you how it's done but the whole time he doesn't know you're not supposed to be the mayor he just assumes because he can't see you in oh, the glasses yeah <laughs> and then he puts his glasses on and realizes you're totally not the mayor. But, like, the mistake's been made. He's got to live with he, it. <laughs> he's like, oh, he, he, he can't admit he's wrong or something like that. And he's like, yep, you're the mayor. <laughs> yep, I'm always the best mayor. That's why I chose you for the job. <laughs> yeah. I think that'd be really funny. Just having him, like, not have his glasses. And then he puts it on at the end. And he's like, you just have him be shocked. Like, oh, wait, that's a totally different person. <laughs> I don't think that this was the picture I got before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess... Any, I, any other details on people that you wanted to add? On um, like your character or whatnot? I guess not. i got some other ones here too for the town. Yeah, not so much. Um, you can continue on the town ones because I was interested in hearing more of those ideas. Um, I'm just going to like rifle them off so we can kind of just talk about all of it. Okay. Is... Um, so I wanted side forest, like more expansion, leaves, um, hills, cliff sides, uh, varying tree sizes, and um, that's that. Yeah, that's when it comes to the landscape. That's what I was thinking. Where um, because the thing that gets me thinking about this is in the first game there were there were mid mid level cliffs like in the town, and then here we have the cliff at the beach, and I think there should be. Like, they don't have to be cut across the map, per se. Um, but just having separate variations in the land so that it all kind of looks more... Um, and I think that it was always weird that pine trees never grew bigger than apple trees. Yeah. Um, and then, But if, if you've ever watched the Animal Crossing movie, uh, the world is giant gigantic like the town is just so big it has like a whole forest that's not even a part of the town there's the cave that they go and explore in yeah i always think um, about that cave yeah would to like go find fossils in like, like all kinds of stuff like that would be neat yeah and you know this brought me to a big point uh -huh. um i don't think it would work out necessarily it would be a big change for animal crossing but i was thinking your town as an island would be kind of neat to oh. where you can walk all the way around it yeah, um, it would have to change to the train would have to become an airport or a speedboat to get to different towns. Mm -hmm. But 
yeah th th there's my there, let's go ahead and talk about okay <laughs> there, there's so much there because it kind of makes me think of like one of the last things i wanted to talk about but before i get to that um yeah so thinking about um the movie and like all the different sized trees and the big forest and the cave and everything i remember the map that first came out for animal crossing new leaf and I mean, we got like so little news about oh, it, yeah. but no, a lot of people initially were like, oh, are there caves in this game that we can like look through? And um, then they introduced like the mineral thing. So I think people were just like really pushing for like some sort of mining in the game in a new area, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but then also like I uh, very often I kind of pick up Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and just go into the Animal Crossing level or the mm -hmm. track and I really like all of the different sized trees in that world um, mm -hmm. that, that was actually one thing that got me thinking too about the trees is that they've done it in something that shows Animal Crossing yeah we've seen and it's beautiful the we've there, there's cliffs in that one too like I was talking about like mm -hmm. you know there's cliffs before the water and the, like it's all a varying landscape and it just looks really nice that way yeah it'd be real uh, i remember like you could get i think up to two cliffs in that first game and it was really cool to have like that middle level yeah you could get two cliffs totally and that was one thing that i really liked and that's what made me think about having keep the cliff near the beach like they have it because that's pretty cool mm -hmm. um maybe even have it taper off on a side like one side is the cliff and then like the other side is a, a smooth gradient to the beach mm -hmm. and um but then the the mid cliffs those were always so like neat like because your town was just at different levels and they could actually wrap around corners and stuff they didn't have to be all the way across flat yeah yeah no i love that idea um because I remember resetting, eventually I got to the point on the GameCube one where I was just resetting to have really interesting town features. Because even like the ramps that your cliff had would be different um, depending on like where they were on your town. So I'd always go for like two cliffs with all the most interesting ramps or a river that kind of had like it would split but then meet up again. So the bridge over it would go over a little island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anything that just like makes the the world that you're in in Animal Crossing just like show more variety, I'm always uh, for. Yeah. Um. I'm looking at the picture actually that one you mentioned earlier, and uh, it's funny because they actually do show a cave on the right side, and then they yeah. show like a forest up top. Yeah. And exactly. They even show like a tiny island, and what I thought. Because they showed the diving, you know, they showed the person mm -hmm. jumping into the water. I was thinking that maybe you'd be able to swim to that, but then there's buoys after a certain point and you can't go any further. Yeah, I think the first one of the first things I did when I got like the, um, what is it, the wetsuit? Yeah, the when wet I got suit, the wetsuit yeah. was I just like swam out to those buoys to see if there was anything special, <laughs> you know. And then got bummed out. <laughs> yeah but it, that's, it, that, that's exactly what like, people oh. were thinking like it would be so cool to swim to this cave you know just like right off your town and yeah. just find other things that you can't find normally um but you mentioned um like building a town on an island or that sort of thing and this made me yeah. think of one of my ideas um because i really want Animal Crossing's like online gameplay to grow and so one of the things I thought of was it would be really cool if like you know a Minecraft server you can team up with your friends and all build on it you know right like it'd be really cool if you could have a similar thing for Animal Crossing like there was just this like playground town that you could all go to and build on it you know like a, a, like a whole separate town yeah um, and like it'd be cool if you could choose a different theme like if you wanted to build a town together be like oh i want this one to be up in the mountains or i want this one to be on an island you know yeah and um that actually goes with a little bit like okay so the thing about the the island that i didn't really care for when i was thinking about making uh the animal crossing island is because i do like the train but what i what i thought that was going in my mind about this was what if the game has the ability that you're on an island 
with four extra slots. And those slots are friends towns that you can pair up with. So that even if they're offline, say, you could possibly visit their town. And you wouldn't be able to mess up the place or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they would make it, you know, to where it's, you know, you, you just make it to where you don't mess other people's stuff up. They have to be there for you to, like, have permission to, like, do anything. Mm -hmm. But you could actually visit each other, and you would have an island of, say, five people living on an island together with five towns. And if you wanted to visit people, like, across the world and whatnot then you would take the airport and you know oh yeah change. yeah but uh but like this this would be like how they have the best friends implementation already they're like do you want to go to your best friends well your best friends would be they connected your towns and it's all one big island yeah no i i actually like that a lot because that first game has that like you know it's so easy to play animal crossings before new leaf like with other people like everybody kind of uh -huh. lives in the same town but now that we've gotten a taste of like oh this is how great it can be when you have your own town that you have complete uh -huh. control over like it'd be cool to combine that aspect so i totally get what you're saying with like you know there are four different or five different um towns within this island and each of your friends has control over it but like you yeah, can you're visit each, each mayor other of your own little town and then maybe there's something in the middle of it all that you all can be a part of so it's like mayors get together and make this cool area for everyone to share and do whatever with yeah it could like even a, be like the city minecraft and it's like i was gonna say that we live in a post minecraft world where you could do anything in a game mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so like the middle of it could be like the city and city folk you know um mm -hmm. But yeah, just like overall, I want that like online play to grow in some way that's just like more interesting than it's been. Um, mm -hmm. Like it'd be cool. Like in City Folk, I loved the idea of going to the city, but then that always just felt pretty bare bones to me. And uh -huh. so it'd be cool if like there was a city that you could visit that just had tons of more like shops or games and things to do. Like maybe it has an arcade or something. And like right. when you went to it, other people could also go and meet online and i'm hoping like they also like grow the amount of people because like when you went to the online island like it was limited to four but it'd be cool to like up that number even to, like 10 or something yeah and just have all out huge games like have a game of soccer <laughs> you know like a whole <laughs> a whole thing to enjoy yeah yeah it'd be really cool um but yeah, I'm trying to remember what else you mentioned, if you could remind me. We had the side forests, exploration, caves, hills and cliffs, trees of different sizes, the island town. Um, yeah, that's that's. I think that's everything that I have that has to do with outdoors, uh, the world. Yeah. Um, well, I, I love it all. I'm excited. I want to play this game. <laughs> yeah. I think there was another little thing. So, I don't want the game to become Harvest Moon or uh, or Stardew Valley, anything like that. But the game played with farming before with the red turnips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know it did. did. A, they did away with it. And I think having some sort of farming would be kind of neat because... You know, you grow trees, so you can grow these fruit. Well, why not grow vegetables throughout the town? Like, just have carrots, like, you know, growing through and whatnot. Yeah. Like, I don't want a farming simulator, but I would like to just be able to grow, like, veggies mm -hmm. and such. Or just have, you know, watermelons growing near the beach, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, that totally reminds me. I completely forgot about this, but one of the things I really wanted was, like, bushes that could grow berries. Like, I first mm -hmm. saw the holly, and I was like, oh, is that growing berries? Like... Can I pick those and sell those in the shop? Yeah. And, and then... see, like, the game has mushrooms, too. So it's like, you know, the idea of, you know, those are fungus. You can have, like, the idea of having vegetables grow through the town really isn't that far-fetched. Like, yeah. having some form of gardening wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, and it would work, like, pretty perfectly if you updated your home to have, like, a backyard. And yeah, you then you the, just garden you back there. Backyard and you have garden patches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm super so, into that. Um, especially yeah, like, I, it's like I, or go for go it. Ahead. <laughs> um, well, 
I don't want it to be like, oh, this is your job. Like, that's how Harvest Moon is. It's like, this is how you continue the game, is like, by farming. Or, you know, same with Stardew Valley. It's like, you have to farm, or else you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But if it's just like a casual, yeah, you can go ahead and start growing stuff. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I would really like and that. I think it wouldn't be too hard to make it like a natural thing either. Because like I said, in Wild World, my main form of money was like every three days, the fruit would grow back and I would go and sell it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to do that, but it was like an option for me. So it'd just be cool to like grow things in my farm and be like, oh, I'm getting a little extra cash in the game to mess with. Yeah, yeah. And just have, or like have naturally growing yams and whatnot just in the forest, because that, that does happen. You can go out into a forest and find carrots, yams, and whatnot in mm -hmm. many places. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I really like that idea of farm, uh, adding that. Just like, because uh, I think what Animal Crossing does well is like it presents you with like things you can do, and then you can do them if you want, you know? Like mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to do everything every day but you could just enjoy the parts of the game that you like um, yeah and that's what i think is like the really big deal about animal crossing that makes it so much fun is you don't have to do anything you you can do you can do anything in the game but you don't have to do anything in the game mm -hmm. yeah and then now i'm also thinking about like the side forest type of idea and i'm just like yeah it'd be cool to expand your town like Mm -hmm. you're the mayor you know and you you build specific things that like make money like you build a coffee shop in your town right. in New Leaf and I'm like oh well that's bringing in like income to your town or people are doing some tourism like you know when Katie the cat is lost in your town um, right but it'd be cool if like eventually like your town is earning money and then it's like, oh, you can grow your town. You can add this many acres to it. And uh -huh. so it just gives you more room to work with, you know? Yeah, I think just just being able to have some sort of world beyond your little world would be really cool in my opinion. Like, that's why I like the idea of a forest. Like. Maybe you can't build, like, your major projects in there, but it's just somewhat, like, maybe no one even lives there, aside from some, like, special characters that live in the forest. But it, uh, it would just give this appeal of, okay, I just left my town, but I didn't go into a new town. I'm just in the forest. And, uh... And it's, a, it's a, like a spot that you can hang out in and just sort of chill. Like maybe even the music changes to like a more natural sound. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I'm I, into uh, that, especially the idea of having like some, uh, like say there's just some extra villager that lives in a cabin in the forest. Um, yeah. Because I remember like if you like, uh, hooked up like your Game Boy name? Advance. Or what guy? The, what's the, the hippie guy's name? Uh, oh, Harvey. RV Park. Yeah, like Harvey could be living out in a cabin out there or something. Yeah. Um, but I, I just remember, like, when you'd hook up your Game Boy Advance on the GameCube one, you'd go to the island, and somebody lived on the island, you know? Yeah, yeah someone was just chilling there all the time. Yeah. So it'd be cool, like, as you unlock, or if you make these aspects of your town unlockables, like, it'd be cool if somebody was just always there, you know? Mm -hmm. So it added yeah. a, a new face to your experience. And um, speaking about like just chilling, like I was saying in the forest and what, um, it brings me to this one thing I've always wanted in the game is spawning fish, as in like you could put your fishing rod in the water and just hang out, and more <laughs> fish would spawn, and you don't necessarily need to keep pulling out and moving. And yeah, you just sort of you could sit there and fish and chill with it, and it's like okay, maybe that gets rid of a little bit of like. The idea of you know going around and fishing mm -hmm. and traveling your town like that, but at the same time, I feel like if they made it to where maybe you found a spawn area rather than finding just a fish there, like you found like a school of fish, mm -hmm. and you could sit there and keep fishing that spot. Yeah, I think it would just be it, it's more realistic towards how fishing really is because. If you catch a fish, you don't automatically leave. You go, oh, there's fish here, and you stay there, and you keep fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that, um, especially because, well, I, I noticed 
I was doing like the salmon um, thing in my New Leaf game because I was I had to catch ten salmon to get like three meow coupons, right? Yeah. And one thing I noticed as I was fishing is I feel like they made the sp- they changed the spawn of fishing since the update. So I'd fish for a fish and I'd catch it, and then right after another like shadow would pop up there. Yeah, it does happen sometimes, you know, where you can just sort of hang out there. Like I've seen it. Like sometimes they do just rise up mm-hmm. out of the water. But yeah, I totally also get your way though, like where you just kind of throw it in and you don't know when you're gonna get something. <laughs> yeah, like you can have the shadows as it is, but then you can also have the kickback method and. Mm-hmm you know, maybe see more happen or like your bobber starts going up and down. You're like, oh, there are fish here (laughs) and you can keep fishing that area. Oh, almost Uh, forgot to mention that Nintendo actually tweeted a couple of Animal Crossing themed um, images. And so specifically, um, we've got one of Cap'n, and we got one of K.K. Slider. And I don't know if Nintendo's trying to hint at the possibilities of a new game, but the Cap'n one was probably two days ago now, and yes. it said, Cap'n always has a lot to say, so be sure to listen closely. Hashtag Animal Crossing, hashtag Nintendo Power. What do you think? And, yeah... Okay, so we've got the KK one a few days before that, and then we've got this Cap'n one, and it, they just sort of spliced them out there. No really big announcement. Um, and then there's two things about this. Is one, okay, Animal Crossing. We, we've been knowing about the app for a long time. It's supposed to be coming to mobile devices. And then it's been delayed for a long time uh, because it was supposed to come out 2016, but that didn't happen, and it's just been coming. They've said they're still working on it. I think it's going to be an announcement for both. I think they're going <laughs> to announce the app and the Switch version at the same time, saying that there will be parity between them. And yeah. a really big detail about these that also seems interesting is Nintendo Power, which if you kept up or you really loved Nintendo Power, you realize that Nintendo Power died a few years ago. They actually discontinued it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they and stopped so, making it maybe they're going to bring back Nintendo Power as well as maybe an online subscription or something. That would be pretty uh, cool, actually. Yeah, like having the, being a news update because they have the uh, they have the directs, which is it's cool. Mm-hmm. And I think Nintendo is really an internal company. They, they use they're using Twitter. They're using YouTube and whatnot. But they like being like, here's our directs. This is where we announce our stuff. I think they want to make a Nintendo Power site. Like, this is where we'll make verbal in picture announcements. <laughs> and, uh, which would be really cool, in my opinion. Yeah, and they already um, do, like, such a good job of, like, giving news updates through the Switch. Um, there's pretty much an update, like, every day, I feel like. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, so there's always, like, new stuff coming out. And then, but yeah, the KK Slider one, I'll mention that too. That one, their tweet said, you can always count on KK Slider to be punctual for Saturday night performances. And I haven't looked up, I guess, like when the first announcement of Animal Crossing is. Because I'm part of me is like, I want to get really deep into this and figure out like if this is a clue for like a possible day that they're going to tell us about news. But... The other part of me um, is just like, eh, that's a fun post. Yeah. <laughs> and well, because they also had uh, last year in November, they had the Welcome Amiibo update announcement. Mm-hmm. They had and, the whole direct. Yeah, um, the whole direct for it. And it, it, we're, we're almost at that time again this year. And I it, it really works out because Mario Odyssey comes out later this month. And I feel like, okay, they've got a huge hype train for Mario Odyssey. They don't need to say anything right now. Just go ahead and let Mario Odyssey come out and be Mario Odyssey. Everyone's going to love it. Mm-hmm. And then maybe two weeks into November, we get a direct for Animal Crossing. And it's like, of course we love it. We're talking <laughs> about this podcast right now. Yeah. But it just seems, I've seen like just looking around forums, looking around like just general Switch posts that don't involve Animal Crossing, that just involve Nintendo discussion in general. I always see 
a huge amount of people saying, let's get a new Animal Crossing on the Switch. Yeah, I mean, people are really pushing for it. And I see the same thing. Like, any post about the Nintendo Switch, somebody's inev inevitably going to say Animal Crossing. And mm -hmm. I think it's something people have really been pushing for. Even since, like, the Wii U came out, they were just like, whoa, an HD Animal Crossing? That's going to be awesome. So mm -hmm. I think... And and it's at the a, point where they just like... an IP we didn't get on the Wii U. Yeah, so. they completely skipped it. And part of it's like, uh, sure, people really like the handheld aspect of Animal Crossing. And so maybe they skipped it because of that on the, U, uh, on the Wii U. But now we have the Switch, which is like anything you want it to be. And so it just makes so much sense for people to be wanting it on the Switch and asking for it. And even, uh, like, we talk about, like, our thoughts of, like, when this announcement's going to happen, but I think consistently I've always just thought, like, okay, they're going to have a direct that covers the app and then just gives us that surprise announcement that Animal Crossing is coming to Switch, you know? Mm hmm So, and then November, um, I feel like it makes sense um, coming out. Like, like you said, Mario Odyssey is going to be out of the way. Um, their one big game left, as far as like Nintendo goes, is Xenoblade Chronicles, and right. then after that, it's just gonna. I feel like it's just gotta be like new announcements post December. So it'd be cool to like sneak in an early look at what's gonna happen in 2018. Mm -hmm. So, mm, I think I think it'll happen. I hope it happens. I want it to be the deal <laughs> yeah i'm pushing I for I want it them to, i want them to have the announcement for all that <laughs> yeah for sure i'm definitely into that so excitement <laughs> and um yeah i'm trying to find if there's any news on like when this like the original one was announced like because they said he's punctual and captain always has a story to tell that deal um, yeah, I mean, I, they're kind I'm of not, like I, ominous messages that feel like they are hinting at something, you know? Right. And the original one came out April 14th, 2001. Mm -hmm. So that's the original release. So I'm not sure when they announced it. But and then it came out in America September 15th, 2002, the next year. Um, so who knows? If they, if they do it... Who, what if we get Animal Crossing by April of next year? I mean, seeing I'm how they, it. I, I, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised a huge amount of that early of a release from announcement because we didn't get the Nintendo Switch announced uh, last year, and what was it November or just October? It was right around this time last year, October, November, somewhere there, and then the Nintendo Switch. Direct was in January, and then the thing was out in March. You know, it was really quick. Yeah, and that was a whole system. Yeah, I Whereas, think the biggest yeah. thing of like Nintendo this year is like their turnaround time on announcements and then games coming out is so fast. Yeah. So I really think like when they announce Animal Crossing, like it's gonna be closer than we ever thought it would be. Yeah, it's like, hey, Animal Crossing Crossing is coming out within six months. By the way. Mm hmm It would change lives. So, uh, <laughs> hype, hype. Like when I saw when I saw that Cap'n tweet, I was like, no way. They're teasing Animal Crossing like right now. They're, like here it is. They're just like, hey, Cap'n, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and listen closely. It's like like they're really teasing that there's gonna be a direct or something. I really hope they else. are, because. There were plenty of angry, like, tweet responses when they said, like, happy 15th anniversary to Animal Crossing just back in September, so. Right. And it was like, mm, happy anniversary, but we're not talking about anything. Yeah. Hopefully there's a new game soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one, th these two specifically, they really seem to mean more, though, than because it's like, okay, happy 15th anniversary. That's one thing. That's at least acknowledging that the IP exists. Um, but these, like, random tweets with these characters seem very different. Yeah. It, 
and uh, the the big thing too is like okay, it's Nintendo Power. It doesn't. They're not just sharing old Nintendo Power pictures because that's the newer captain, you know. Yeah, it could just be like them saying like, okay, guys, we get it. Animal Crossing's been out of our minds for a while, but we're here to give you the news that it's coming back. Mm-hmm. So, fingers crossed on that. Really, really hoping so. Yeah, me too. Definitely. Well, oh. I think we've covered it. We've gotten so many things, so many ideas. Um, if you want to yeah, remind everybody who you are, where they can find you, go for it. I'm Connor. I'm on Ubercrit. If you go to youtube.com slash Ubercrit, you'll find me there. And you can also catch me every week on Chaotic Radio, the kind of gaming show. And you can get it on Chaotic Radio, the app, or you can go on to uh, YouTube and do Chaotic Radio Live. That's the one that we use. And it's a live cast. Every week we have a podcast about gaming, kind of. It's, there's other stuff pickled in there, so... Yeah, awesome. And for everybody listening, thank you once again for tuning in. As always, you can support this show, my YouTube channel, on patreon.com slash Nintendo. And, oh, just an update. I am, I guess, still looking for a full-time co-host um, to join me. I've gotten some replies. Those are still open. I don't know when I'll be able to make the decision. I'm seeing my travel schedule is pretty crazy the rest of the year, but hopefully by the end of the year, we can find somebody to join me on this show. Um, thanks for watching and, or listening, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and we will talk to you later. Thanks for joining, Connor. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'll see you, everybody. Bye.